Bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone. Je suis heureux d'être ici ce matin avec le ministre Leblanc, bien sûr, le docteur Tam et le docteur Tam Tam New. And Dr. New. The situation we're facing with COVID-19 remains extremely serious. On Sunday, Ontario reported a record single-day high of new COVID cases. And not just in Ontario, but in many parts of the country, ICU beds and hospitals are filling up. And the patients in them are younger and younger. This is not the place anyone wanted to be right now. Because when hospitals fill up, it, put pressure, it puts pressure on nurses, doctors, and all healthcare workers. And it means that operations or treatments have to be canceled or postponed, like for people who are waiting for cancer surgery. We're not out of the woods yet with this virus. Everyone is working around the clock to get as many Canadians vaccinated as quickly as possible. But right now, more contagious and dangerous variants are spreading and threatening the progress we've made. Even with millions of Canadians already having received their first dose, <clears throat> we need to keep doing what we know works to stop the spread of the virus. So avoid gatherings, stay home when you can, wear a mask, keep your distance, and download and use the COVID Alert app. We know what it takes to stop this wave. We know how to get out of it. We've done it before. We just need to hang in there, be careful, and protect our loved ones, protect our essential workers, do the right thing so we can get to a summer that is better than right now. Today, I also want to address teachers, parents, and kids across the country. Yesterday, Premier Ford announced that schools will close in-person learning indefinitely as cases of COVID-19 rise sharply in Ontario. And we know that other provinces are watching the situation in their schools, too. I know this isn't easy. So to teachers, parents, and kids, thank you for your efforts once again. You are stepping up in incredible ways, and I know it's tough. Nobody wants to go back to online learning. Nobody wants to be stuck at home. But we have to make it through this. And things will get better because of what we're all doing right now. Since the beginning of the crisis, we've invested $2 billion through the Safe Return to Class Fund to help provinces and territories make your schools safer. And we will continue to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to get us through this. Jusqu'à maintenant, on a livré plus de 11.3 million de million doses de COVID-19 vaccines have been delivered to the provinces and territories. Pfizer, on a reçu as planned, has received, we've received just over 1 million doses of the Pfizer. As for Moderna, a shipment of 850,000 doses arrived in Canada this morning. Vaccination is progressing every day. More and more people doses. are receiving their doses, but that doesn't mean we can't continue to protect each other by following public health advice. Avec ces variants, With these variants, the cases in this third wave are spreading very quickly. On est tous tannés We're all tired of COVID-19. With the events Montréal, of the last few nights in Montreal and elsewhere in the country, we can see that people, there are people who are increasingly frustrated, but so long as we are not following public health advice, we're only prolonging the situation. And we want to get out of this third wave. Everyone wants to exit the third wave as soon as possible. We need to continue our efforts to save lives, to help our healthcare workers who are overwhelmed. Just a few more weeks, a few more weeks of following the public health advice, guidelines, being very careful, and then we can have a hope for a much better summer. But as you know, the cases we're dealing with today are based on the actions uh, we took a week or two weeks ago. And if we want, to see a decrease, a drop in the number of cases. So in two weeks, we need to do the right les thing today. Arrive, vaccines are coming, cas but we need to reduce cases. Juin, By avoir the end of June, we will have received 44 Alors, million doses of vaccines. This is not the time to 
give up Depuis le début de la crise, the on parle souvent des travailleurs essentiels. Que ce soit dans nos hôpitaux, dans nos écoles workers, ou ailleurs, ces travailleurs font des efforts schools, elsewhere, as we said earlier, incroyables. These workers are making Et quand on parle de travail essentiel, and when we talk about essential work, le travail well, that, course, de nos agriculteurs includes the crucial work of our farmers who allow us to put quality food on our tables. Une des choses que la pandémie nous a démontré, c'est à quel point il est important d'avoir un secteur agricole fort et résilient. As we continue to work on economic recovery, we want to ensure that Canada's supply-managed producers have the tools they need to succeed. There are thousands of poultry and egg farms in Canada. A lot of them are owned by families. Last year, we pro promised those families that we would invest over $690 million over 10 years to provide full and fair compensation to Canada's chicken turkey and egg farmers following the CPTPP trade agreement. Later today, Minister Bibo will share details about how this funding will help producers invest to modernize their farms and how it will help promote Canadian-made products here at home. But the bottom line is this. Our government will always be there for Canadian farmers. So to farmers, thank you for your incredibly hard work. You stepped up during this pandemic to get good food on our plates. Through this pandemic and beyond, we've got your back. Together, we'll continue to build a sustainable future for rural farm families and for all the Canadians who rely on you every single day. Anyone who's seen the endless miles of wheat and canola as they drive across the country can tell you just how big Canada is. In a country like ours, Air travel is an essential service. On that front, yesterday, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland and Minister Al Khabra announced that we've reached an agreement with Air Canada to secure air travel for Canadians for the future. The conditions for Air Canada to receive this support are very clear. They will ensure that regional communities have air connections to the rest of Canada. They will refund their customers for pandemic related cancellations. They will commit to protect jobs, pensions, and collective agreements. And they will restrict executive compensation, buyback shares, and dividends. Air Canada will also have to demonstrate how they will support environmental sustainability and national climate goals. The deal is a good and fair deal in the interests of jobs, workers, communities, and customers. L'entente annoncée hier avec Air Canada va protéger les emplois, garder nos communautés connectées et assurer que les passagers soient remboursés. Le secteur aérien est un secteur stratégique pour notre économie et nos négociations avec les autres transporteurs aériens se poursuivent. Comme toujours, on va s'assurer de mettre les intérêts des Canadiens et des travailleurs au cœur de tout ce qu'on fait. Ce dernier an a été difficile. There have been a lot of special moments and celebrations that have been done differently. Yesterday, I had the chance to speak virtually with Sikh healthcare professionals from across Canada to celebrate Vasaki and Sikh Heritage Month and to thank them for everything they do. Happy Vasaki to everyone celebrating. This week also marks the start of Ramadan. I want to take this opportunity to thank the many Muslim Canadians who continue to work hard on the front lines and the many others who are helping their neighbors and communities during these difficult times. Cette année, encore, le Ramadan this year, va être bien Ramadan will be different again. It will involve virtual means of gathering online rather than in person. But one thing is for sure, the pandemic will not stop us from celebrating the values of gratitude, compassion, and generosity that are at the heart of Muslim communities and that are shared by Canadians from all walks of life. Ramadan Mubarak, Happy Ramadan. 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 Je suis maintenant euh, content de céder la parole à la Dr. Tam et de dire congratulations, Theresa. Je pense que vous avez reçu votre vaccin aussi. C'est une bonne nouvelle. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. As we continue to track current surveillance data against the longer range modeling forecast from just over two weeks ago, we are seeing daily cases still rising along a strong resurgence trajectory. 
Although COVID-19 vaccine benefits are being seen for high-risk groups prioritized during the initial rollout, experience worldwide is unequivocal in cautioning us that strict public health measures will continue to be crucial during this phase of vaccine rollout, especially in the presence of high rates of disease. To date, over 1,071,000 cases of COVID-19, including over 23,350 deaths, have been reported in Canada. Over the past week, there has been a 33% rise in daily case counts, with an average of almost 8,100 new cases reported daily. During the same time, the number of people experiencing severe and critical illness continues to rise. On average, over 3,000 people with COVID-19 were being treated in their hospitals each day, representing a 29% increase over last week. This includes almost 970 people being treated in intense care units, which is a 24% higher than last week. Although the number of deaths has averaged around 30 each day for several weeks, there is concern that if the increase in severe illnesses persists, we could see a gradual increase in the mortality trend. With today's average of 34 deaths daily over the past week, with, with 30, today's average at 34 deaths daily over the past week, there are almost 36,000 variants of concern cases reporting to date across Canada, with a B117 variant accounting for over 96% of these. These trends are discouraging, but they reinforce why we must strengthen precautions to bring this variant of concern-driven resurgence under control quickly. This is a third big push, and we're all tired, but the benefits of applying our strongest collective effort by following public health advice and strictly maintaining individual precautions could not be greater. This push will enable us to focus more capacity towards vaccine rollout. Two great examples of this unified effort I will highlight today are from Nova Scotia. We have recently learned of a vaccine clinic organized for Black Nova Scotians in the Hammonds Plains community, just outside of Halifax. The clinic was held at the historic Emmanuel Baptist Church, which has long been an important fixture in the community. Coming together in solidarity, to receive COVID-19 vaccines is a testimony to the community's perseverance and commitment to ensuring people feel culturally safe in the vaccination process. I also heard about a pharmacist in Cape Breton who converted an old ambulance into a mobile clinic to bring COVID-19 vaccination to seniors and people with mobility challenges. There are so many examples from individuals to organizations finding ways to help others and make sure that we all end this crisis together, stronger and more united. Finally, on our current trajectory, it might seem premature to think of the days when restrictions will ease and social and economic activities will resume. But if we want to take forward the things we've learned about the importance of family, community and equity, about how we supported each other, adapted and innovated, we must commit to acting thoughtfully clear in the view of what we want to take forward. The end of this crisis will be a time of great change. Let's not race towards the finish and risk stumbling along the way. Let's make every step count by continuing at pace together. Thank you. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Alors que nous continuons d'assurer le suivi des données de surveillance actuelle, as we continue to track surveillance, current surveillance data against the longer range modeling forecast from just over two weeks ago, we are seeing daily cases still rising along a strong resurgence trajectory. Although COVID-19 vaccine benefits are being seen for high-risk groups prioritized during the initial rollout, Experience worldwide is unequivocal in cautioning us that strict public health measures will continue to be crucial during this phase of vaccine rollout, especially in the presence of high rates of disease. 
To date, over 1,071,000 cases of COVID-19, including over 23,350 deaths, have been reported in Canada. Over the past week, there has been a 33% rise in daily case counts, with an average of almost 8,100 new cases reported daily. During the same time, the number of people experiencing severe and critical illness continues to rise. On average, over 3,000 people with COVID-19 were being treated in our hospitals each day, representing a 29% increase over last week. This includes almost 970 people being treated in intensive care units, which is 24% higher than last week. Although the number of deaths has averaged around 30 each day for several weeks, there is a concern that if the increase in severe illnesses persists, we could see a gradual increase in the mortality trend. But to today's average, at 34 deaths daily over the past week. There are almost 36,000 variants of concerned cases reported to date across Canada, with the B117 variant accounting for over 96% of these. These trends are discouraging, but they reinforce why we must strengthen precautions to bring this variant of concern-driven resurgence under control quickly. This is the third big push, and we're all tired, but the benefits of applying our strongest collective effort by following public health advice and strictly maintaining individual precautions could not be greater. This push will enable us to focus more capacity towards vaccine rollout. Two great examples of this unified effort I will highlight today are from Nova Scotia. We have recently learned of a vaccine clinic organized for black Nova Scotians in the Hammonds Plains community just outside of Halifax. The clinic was held at the historic Emmanuel Baptist Church, which has long been an important fixture in the community. Coming together in solidarity to receive COVID-19 vaccine is a testimony to the community's perseverance and commitment to ensuring people feel culturally safe in the vaccination process. I also heard about a pharmacist in Cape Breton who converted an old ambulance into a mobile clinic to bring COVID-19 vaccination to seniors and people with mobility challenges. There are so many examples from individuals to organizations finding ways to help others and make sure that we all in this crisis together stronger and more united. Finally, on our current trajectory, it might seem premature to think of the days when restrictions will ease and social and economic activities social will reprendre. resume. Cependant, si nous but voulons if we mettre want profit, to take forward the things we've learned famille, about the importance of family, community, and equity, about how we supported each other, Nous nous sommes adaptés et avons innové, nous devons nous engager et agir de façon réfléchie, en sachant clairement quelles leçons nous désirons en tirer. Cette crise crise laissera place à une période de changement importante. Ne nous attendons pas trop vite, car nous risquerions de rencontrer des obstacles. Passons chaque étape une à la fois en continuant de faire des choses tous en même temps. Merci. Thank you, Dr. New. The PM will be answering questions for 20 minutes. Minister LeBlanc, doctors will remain available for more questions for another 15 minutes afterwards. One question, one follow-up, starting with the phone. Merci beaucoup, Dr. New. Le Premier ministre va répondre aux questions pendant 20 minutes et doit nous quitter par la suite. Le ministre LeBlanc et les docteurs euh, répondront à d'autres questions par la suite pour un total de 15 minutes. Une question, une sous-question, en commençant par le téléphone. Opérateur, c'est à vous. Merci. Thank you. Please press star one if you have a question. Veuillez appuyer sur étoile 1 pour poser une question. Notre première question est de Lina Dip de la Presse canadienne. À vous la parole. Please go ahead. Oui, bonjour. Hello. Je voudrais savoir si les derniers, les like derniers développements sur le vaccin de Johnson et Johnson, 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 Johnson vaccine quelque chose à notre intention. 
de commander les millions de doses any effect on de our intent to on attend encore les premières doses still euh, receive après. those doses that we are expecting mm -hmm. Or would we Merci, postpone? Lina. On est dû pour recevoir uh, nos premières Answer. doses de Johnson We're Johnson to receive our à la first fin doses of Johnson du mois d'avril. Uh, mais évidemment, April, on course, va continuer de regarder attentivement uh, ce qui se passe aux États-Unis avec uh, leur expérience. Uh, on continue d'être en, en discussion uh, avec, uh, avec la compagnie uh, et uh, with, uh, de comparer uh, uh, nos, nos données avec uh, tous nos partenaires. Mais Santé Canada va toujours prendre les bonnes décisions pour assurer la sécurité de tout le monde. Et c'est aussi un exemple de pourquoi c'est une bonne chose qu'on ait tellement de différents contrats avec différentes compagnies vaccins, parce que même sans Johnson Johnson, on va avoir plus de 44 millions de doses d'ici la fin du mois de juin. C'est important d'avoir plusieurs options et c'est exactement ce qu'on a. Donc, si je comprends bien... Juste une seconde, Lina, je vais répondre en anglais d'abord. I'll answer that in English now. Uh, we are still on track to receiving our first shipment of the Johnson & Johnson uh, Janssen vaccine uh, by the end of this month, uh, but obviously we're following closely uh, developments in the United States and uh, we can in ensure, assure uh, everyone that Health Canada will every step of the way uh, put the health of Canadians first and foremost uh, in any decisions we make around uh, distributing vaccines. But it also uh, goes to highlight um, that it was important that we uh, signed deals with a large range of potential vaccine makers because uh, we didn't know which ones would be most effective, which ones would arrive uh, early. Uh, that's why Canadians are well served. And even without uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, we are going to be receiving over 44 million doses uh, by the end of June. A follow-up, Lena? Euh, Thank you. Donc, dommage que Mme Annan ne Question. soit pas là, mais si je comprends bien, Minister on ne touchera here, pas au contrat, ça ne changera we rien. Do, on, va, on va quand même acheter contract. des millions de doses we will et, still be et décider entre temps si on les administre ou pas, si on les administre ou pas, si on les administre ou pas. On a signé des contrats avec euh, sept Answer. différentes We've compagnies à travers le monde l'année passée pour justement s'assurer que, passé, that's uh, something we did last year, precisely que to make sure uh, quelles que soient les compagnies that qui livraient company, uh, le meilleur vaccin ou un vaccin efficace vaccine, rapidement, nous allions être quickly, bien uh, positionnés. Donc oui, position. on a un contrat, way, on a so acheté yes, des doses de Johnson & Johnson et on espère que ça, ça va être des doses qu'on pourra utiliser pour protéger les Canadiens de la COVID, mais on va prendre nos décisions basées sur les recommandations de Santé Canada, basées sur ce qu'eux ont conclus par rapport à ce qu'ils voient dans le monde. Conclude on the basis of what Merci. they're seeing the world over. Prochaine question. Merci. Our next question is from Ryan Timothy from the National Post. Please go ahead. I will have the Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. I I'm wondering, um, obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, but, uh, you know, we're in the middle of this third wave now, and vaccines wouldn't solve it, but they certainly do some way to help address its impact. Is there anything about our vaccine procurement approach as a country that you, uh, in retrospect, now think was a mistake or where you would have liked to have acted earlier? Uh, no, not in terms of our, our vaccine rollout. Obviously, uh, we worked extremely hard from last summer onwards to sign uh, many different contracts with different uh, potential vaccine makers around the world. Uh, and we were among the first countries to start uh, getting approved vaccines uh, uh, into arms uh, back in December. Uh, we've seen various vaccine companies uh, challenged with uh, development or manufacturing issues. Uh, but in general, uh, the, the vaccines uh, have been arriving in Canada in uh, steadily increasing numbers. And I think it's important to remember that vaccination alone, even being well advanced in vaccinations, uh, doesn't necessarily lead to an ability to ease public restrictions. Just look at the case of the UK, where they obviously have a higher rate of vaccination that we, than we have, um, but they also have significant restrictions and have kept them in place uh, for quite a long time. What we need in order to ease restrictions in this, uh, in this country as we get closer to the summer is both for more people to get vaccinated and for the caseloads to go down across the country. 
Those are the two things we need to make sure happens. And restricting caseloads or reducing caseloads has to do with following public health advice, restricting our movement, uh, limiting gatherings, wearing a mask, washing your hands, doing all those things that we know will reduce uh, the number of cases around the country because we've succeeded in doing it before in the second wave and uh, way back in the first wave as well. Following up, Ryan. Yeah, sir. Um, the third wave that we're seeing now is, is worse than it has been uh, at any point during the pandemic for some parts of the country. I'm wondering if now, especially as these cases continue to rise, if you're considering any uh, higher, tighter restrictions at the, from the federal level, um, either restrictions between travel at provinces or maybe more restrictions on incoming travel uh, from overseas. On incoming travel from overseas, we already have some of the strongest restrictions in the world and have had those in place since last March for well over a year now. The two-week mandatory quarantine uh, on uh, essential travelers, uh, the, the, the limits on non-essential travel, uh, now the testing, the pre-boarding uh, pre testing, the on-arrival testing, uh, the mandatory quarantine while we're waiting for uh, the results of the tests, and the two-week quarantine uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a safe situation at home are all things that have meant uh, extremely limited uh, importation of the virus from uh, overseas. Unfortunately, uh, we're still getting a lot of transmission inside the country. Uh, and that is something that we need to continue to, to monitor. Uh, but that's not something that the federal government needs to step up on. The extraordinarily successful example of the Atlantic bubble, for example, uh, was done uh, without the federal government dictating to uh, the uh, Atlantic provinces that they needed to do this. They made that decision on their own, and it was the right one. And of course, as a federal government, we supported them. Uh, similar things for the Northern Territories. Uh, we are there to support the provinces as they uh, make difficult decisions on restrictions. And part of why we're making those decisions easier is by providing unprecedented supports for small businesses, for workers, for families, for seniors, for young people, uh, to make sure that people can stay home and stay safe, uh, if it's at all possible, to keep those essential workers safer. Merci. Opératrice, une dernière question au téléphone, s'il vous plaît. Thank you. Notre prochaine question est de Marie Vastel du Devoir. À vous la parole. Last question, oui. Marie Vastel du Devoir. Over the phone. Uh, oui, bonjour. En fait, j'avais une question sur yes, euh, actually, le vaccin Johnson Johnson et l'utilisation qui a été suspendue aux États-Unis, mais comme M. Trudeau avait déjà répondu, je vais me permettre de poser ma question à Dr. Tam pour avoir des réponses plus précises. Je voudrais like avoir des réponses plus précises à savoir est-ce que euh, cette décision de, des autorités américaines Did the American authorities decision se répéter au Canada? Vous dites que le Canada va regarder la situation. Est-ce que Health Canada peut le faire? Est-ce que Health Canada considère de suspendre l'utilisation de Johnson et Johnson? Et est-ce que cela pourrait être une mesure de Johnson et Johnson vaccine? Et peut-être que cela signifierait que nous allons délayer notre propre utilisation de ce vaccin? Et je pense que nous espérons que ce soit dans deux semaines. Say, Dr. New, peut-être moi je peux commencer. This is Dr. New. Perhaps I can start, and then Dr. Tan may have something to add to it. Yes, we know that our colleagues at Health Canada are independent. They are closely monitoring the situation, and they're having good conversations with their counterparts in the United States. And they will be analyzing the data. They will be making pour, a decision uh, pour, uh, pour ce qui est important dans le contexte as canadien. to Donc, what matters in the Canadian context. So they're currently working on this, and it's not up to us, the Canada Public Health Agency, to comment on the work of Health Canada. Uh, Dr. Tim. Oh. Oui. Um, this is Dr. Tim. Comme vous avez déjà vu, as you've seen, uh, Canada, Health Canada, Canada and processes has rigorous. a very rigorous process. Uh, it will suit, I think, at the same process that it follows que, and it will um, follow the, the same process. The, uh, the sound um, is cutting out. The problem you can go in English if you want, Dr. Tim. I'm sorry I asked it in French, but you can go in Thank English. Thank you. <laughs> 
it's okay. Um, so I think you, you have seen the process once already that the regulator in Health Canada follows when there is a signal of an adverse effect following immunization uh, with the AstraZeneca vaccine. So I expect them that to do the same due diligence connecting to the international regulatory authorities like the Food and Drug Administration in the United States and gather information from them as well as the manufacturer. We've heard about the um, you know, rare side effects. I think it's six cases of these unusual blood clots with low platelets following 6.8 million doses administered in the United States. Health Canada, we need all of this data and do in the Canadian context, the benefit and risk analysis. Following that, I expect that the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, uh, as appropriate, will look at that information as it um, supports the province and territories um, in providing guidance. And uh, I would also expect to um, convene and support a discussion amongst provinces and territories as to how best use the Jensen vaccine in the Canadian context. So all those steps uh, I expect uh, will be followed similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine. En suivi, Marie. Uh, thank you. Just a, a quick follow up, Dr. Tam. When do you expect Health Canada to have done this analysis and, and come out with, with an opinion on this? And M Mr. Trudeau, en, en sous question, on voit que la France uh, suspend tous ses vols avec le Brésil parce que la pandémie France est essentiellement hors de contrôle. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que les Canadiens ne devraient pas voyager. Je sais que tend to ask Brazil, for a stoppage of any flights to Brazil for Canada, and you in, are you considering doing the same thing with other countries? We are closely monitoring what's happening internationally. We will be making decisions as more information becomes available. We have already restricted a number of many international flights, and we have extremely rigorous methods here at our border to make sure we do not import the virus from anywhere. Uh, la variante du Brésil ne se trouve pas seulement au Brésil, il y a quelques cas au Canada déjà. Alors, tout ce qu'on est en train de faire est effectivement pour, pour limiter la transmission. Alors, non seulement ce n'est pas le moment de voyager à l'international, ce n'est pas vraiment un moment pour voyager à l'intérieur de notre pays non plus. Donc, faites attention pendant encore plusieurs semaines et on va continuer de suivre la situation. Merci, on va maintenant passer à des questions dans la salle. Now, questions in the room. that's available. I'm wondering what you say to Canadians who are at a higher risk of blood clots or who have other complications that may prevent them from getting vaccinated. Is that still the right messaging around vaccine hesitancy when many Canadians have legitimate questions about in the face of conflicting information? Uh, medical professionals, whether it's your family doctor, whether it's your pharmacist, whether it's uh, the, the, the National uh, uh, Guidelines Committee, uh, NACI, uh, are uh, making recommendations around uh, which vaccines are right for which people. That means that that gets translated into whichever vaccine you are uh, offered is going to be the right one for you. Et moi, vous entendre sur la situation à l'Université Laurentienne. On a vu hier que les programmes en français sont particulièrement affectés. Euh, question spécifique. D'abord, qu'est-ce que vous en avez pensé? Mais est-ce que vous êtes prêt à prendre le téléphone, faire pression et êtes-vous prêt à offrir au besoin une aide financière? Pour que les programmes uh, are you prepared to établis. provide some financial support to get those programs back up and running? Answer, answer, we are very concerned by the situation of Laurentian University, the Francophone, Francophone Ontario, community in Ontario. Uh, 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 uh,
euh, a raison d'être très fière so, de ses institutions. Rightly so, has very every reason to be very proud of this post-secondary, the francophone post-secondary institutions throughout the province, and we will be closely monitoring what's happening there. I can assure you that Minister Jolie is in contact with her counterpart in the Ontario government to see what their plan is to protect this, this important institution. And yes, the federal government will be there to provide support, but it's up to the province to establish the process. We will be there, as we've been there with respect to Francophone University in Ontario a few years ago. We'll be there. Um, Obviously, I'm very concerned with what has happened. Uh, the reports of what is uh, going on at Laurentian University uh, are uh, francophone institutions, particularly for uh, minority communities like Franco-Ontarians, uh, are extremely important that we protect. Uh, I can assure you that uh, Minister Jolie, the Minister of Official Languages, has uh, reached out to her counterpart in the, uh, in the Ford government, in the Ontario government, uh, to see what their plan is uh, to support and protect uh, this institution. Uh, the federal government uh, will be there to support, but it is uh, a provincial uh, jurisdiction and therefore uh, they need to figure out what the plan is and uh, we will be there to support because uh, we know how important it is to protect uh, official language minorities across the country. Euh, J'aimerais vous entendre sur le Grand Prix de I'd F1 like à Montréal. Je voudrais avoir vos impressions sur la tenue de l'événement comme tel, mais aussi les promoteurs demandent aux différents paliers de gouvernement 6 millions de dollars en contribution euh, parce que, bon, le, bon, les spectateurs sont pas là, etc. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez de l'ouverture à les aider? Euh, L'industrie touristique, uh, notamment, a subi des, des, des durs coups. Alors, je voudrais vous entendre là-dessus. Uh, je sais que les pourparlers sont en train de, de se passer uh, présentement. Answer, I know that discussions are underway right now, but at every step in the process, our focus will be on the health of Canadians and we'll be making decisions on that basis. Question inaudible in the room? We, the discussions are ongoing and we'll see what we can do to protect Merci. the health of Canadians. Thank you. Glenn McGregor, TV News. And Prime Minister, this weekend your party overwhelmingly endorsed the idea of implementing a universal basic income. Today, you're meeting with the leaders of the NDP and the Green parties, who also both strongly support that idea. You seem less enthusiastic yourself. Can you clarify your position on this? And, and as you bring in a, uh, the federal budget, are you going to take the first steps, or is it something you're going to push off to your next mandate? I know people are eager to find out what's in the budget, but they're going to have to wait until uh, uh, next Monday for us to put forward uh, uh, an ambitious budget for this country that is going to be focused on jobs and growth uh, and building back better even as we get through uh, these hopefully final stages of the pandemic. Um, I was incredibly pleased to see Liberals gathering virtually uh, from across the country to talk about uh, what building back better looks like, how we can create good jobs and growth, protect the environment and support the most vulnerable around the country that we've seen have been particularly hard hit by the pandemic. Uh, the Liberal Party conventions have uh, been a source of uh, ideas and initiatives that uh, often have made it into platforms and into policy by the Liberal government. I can think of uh, same-sex marriage, I can think of uh, uh, a range of issues that have been brought forward and we will continue uh, to listen to the grassroots and value uh, their encouragements to continue pursuing various policy uh, options. Uh, the things that we've done for the most vulnerable Canadians, uh, whether it's been supporting the middle class and people working hard to join it with things like the Canada Child Benefit, uh, support for uh, seniors by increasing the guaranteed income supplement, uh, reducing taxes on the middle class and raising them the wealthiest 1% are all things uh, designed to make sure that everyone has a real and fair shot to, uh, to, to succeed. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to continue to work on as a party. Prochaine question. Hi, David Thurton, CBC News. Um, Prime Minister, you had a lot to say about all the work that your government has been doing during this pandemic to provide benefits for Canadians. But the Bloc and even the NDP is saying that you wouldn't have been so generous had it not been for them pushing you and that you would have done the minimum to help Canadians. Do you agree with that? It is the role of political parties to try and make themselves look as good as they can. Uh, and as relevant as they can. It is the role of a government to be there to support Canadians. And I made a very straightforward promise at the beginning of this pandemic that we would have people's backs, that we would be there for Canadians 
as much as it took for as long as it took to get through this pandemic. Not just because it's the right thing to do morally to be there for each other, but also because it is the smart thing to do to ensure that our economy can come roaring back as quickly as possible after this pandemic. And this is about uh, us as a government being true to the values and the principles that we have led with over the past five years. Whether it was the very first thing we did was lower taxes for the middle class and raise them on the wealthiest 1%. Whether it was the fact that we moved forward with a Canada Child Benefit that lifted hundreds of thousands of kids out of poverty. This made a huge difference in the lives of Canadians. The NDP voted against the Canada Child Benefit. We've continued to move forward on lifting seniors out of poverty. We lifted over a million Canadians out of poverty in the first five years of our government at the same time as we created a million jobs. The focus we have as a government is on growing the economy and creating opportunities for Canadians, but we know the best way to do that is to make sure that those opportunities are there for everyone. So I'm always happy to see uh, the NDP and the Bloc and, and the Greens and others uh, supporting the strong measures that we're putting forward. I'm always happy to disagree with the Conservatives when they say that we should have done less for people and more for businesses, uh, because investing in people uh, is something that has demonstrated positive results, not just for Canadians across the country, but for our economy as well, before this pandemic and through this pandemic. We'll take one last question on the phone, on the floor, Plur. Hi, Prime Minister. Chris Reynolds, Canadian Press. Uh, Bill C-19, the legislation that would amend the Canada Elections Act to allow a federal election to play out safely and smoothly during a pandemic. This bill has not yet passed second reading in the House of Commons. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, you will commit here, here today to not ask to dissolve Parliament until that legislation is passed or otherwise trigger an election. As I've said many times, our priority as a government is being there to support Canadians, being there to give them the supports that they need to get through this. A great example of that is the fall economic statement that put forward significant measures to support Canadian families and workers through this difficult time. Unfortunately, the Conservative Party, amongst others, have been blocking this piece of legislation and preventing that help from getting out to Canadians. That's really disappointing. We need to have a government and a parliament that functions to deliver the supports to Canadians they have, not to uh, have parties play political games. So we're going to stay focused on making sure that parliament is working for Canadians. And part of that is ensuring uh, that we do move forward on important initiatives like the C-19, uh, the, safe pandemic uh, safe, the Pandemic Safe Elections Act, uh, which uh, would allow uh, for a federal election to be safer in a pandemic situation. Obviously, nobody wants to have an election uh, right now. Certainly, we do not. But I think it is simply responsible to make sure that parties uh, have the choice, for example, to vote against the budget we're putting forward next week. Uh, and not feel threatened that democracy is so fragile that we can't have an election uh, because uh, they, would, uh, they would be putting Canadians at risk. That's why we're disappointed that even though we've brought forward, uh, I think, five different times, if not more, uh, the Elections Act for debate, uh, it hasn't been able to move forward. Uh, we hope that parties are going to put aside their political differences and allow debate and discussion to happen at committee on the Elections Act. Uh, because we need to have a parliament that functions. But first and foremost, we need to be delivering for Canadians as we're in this third wave. Uh, and we're going to do everything we need uh, to get, uh, to get uh, Canadians the support they have to have uh, while, we, uh, while we bring forward a budget, uh, while we move forward on direct supports for Canadians. Depuis le début, from the very start, I made the promise that we would be Canadians here for Canadians long, for as long as it takes and with all, and all the resources, the resources required that we would get through this period. In order to, for that to happen, we need to deliver within the House of Commons. Uh, we have to deliver on our promises within the House of Commons. 
Uh, promises to Canadians. Unfortunately, the fall economic update has been stalled numerous times by the Conservative Party that is blocking support to Canadians. It is disappointing that they should be playing political games with such important issues for Canadians. Our priority Notre priorité, c'est d'assurer qu'on est là pour appuyer sure les Canadiens. That we are here to uh, les Canadians. autres partis uh, jouent de the temps en temps des jeux politiques. Uh, c'est political comme ça que ça se passe, c'est normal, c'est ça que ça se passe, c'est une démocratie, mais uh, quand vient la question d'aider les gens, quand vient la question d'assurer que les élections que personne ne veut, mais pour elles se passent dans une démocratie, soit le plus sécuritaire possible, possible. j'espère que les autres partis vont permettre le passage de ce projet de loi pour assurer que si on a des élections pendant une période de pandémie, on peut assurer que si on a des élections pendant une période de pandémie, on peut assurer que si on a des élections Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier Thank ministre. C'est tout le temps que vous avez avec nous aujourd'hui. On va maintenant retourner au téléphone pour euh, des now questions we'll pour euh, le ministre Leblanc et les députés. Opératrice, c'est à vous. Minister, Minister Leblanc and the public health officers. From the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Hi, thank you so much for taking my questions. I'm I'm looking for more information about Moderna. We're seeing repeated delays in shipments from Moderna. I believe we're now looking at the third delay in a row um, with provinces being told to expect the shipment that was expected next week to only arrive the week after at the earliest. The Moderna doses that the Prime Minister announced today are actually the ones that were supposed to come last week. So why is this continuing to happen? And is there any clarity on when more certainty will come to Moderna's supply? So I'll, uh, it's Dominic LeBlanc. I'll uh, offer a few comments. And if Dr. Tam or Dr. New want to add something, they obviously can. Um, we have said from the beginning of the vaccine procurement exercise, uh, because of the nature of the global supply chains, because of the nature of the ramp up that these companies uh, are doing around the world, various uh, vaccine manufacturing sites, obviously uh, desperately trying to maximize their capacity and, and the output, that there would be from time to time some delays that are inevitable in these, in these processes. Um, my colleague Anita Anand has explained uh, some issues around quality assurance that Moderna wanted to ensure uh, were in place in their vaccine manufacturing facilities in Europe. This explained a slight delay in the Moderna shipments. I think she referred to the doses that were arriving in Canada today. I think that were picked up uh, in, in Europe yesterday. Uh, and we're very confident that Moderna will quickly work out uh, these issues around the quality assurance, which is obviously essential uh, for Canadians uh, in terms of receiving the vaccines. So we're not convinced that this is a long-term or significant change that will uh, will endure. It's just something that Moderna explained to us was going to be a reality uh, for a few weeks, but we're very much on track uh, to having all the doses we uh, committed to Canadians to having by the end of June, the 44 million as Madame Anand and others have, have discussed. Following up, Marika? Yeah, I, I appreciate that response, but the focus on the end of June does not address the fact that each of these doses are needed now and they're continuing to be delayed. I'm wondering um, what message you've given to provinces on how much buffer time they need to give to their vaccine appointment bookings because of the uncertainty. For example, Ontario said today that the delays are having an impact on the continuity of their vaccine operations. We saw Manitoba cancel appointments last week because of the Moderna delays. We saw Nova Scotia saying that they're working on a two-week time frame and only allowing appointments to be booked once deliveries have been confirmed because of the uncertainty. So what's your message to province on how fast they actually can go right now, given this uncertainty? So uh, our message to provinces and territories, again, has been consistent that we want to work collaboratively with them 
and share all of the information that we have as a national government in real time with them as vaccine suppliers uh, inevitably uh, as I indicated a, a few minutes ago, inevitably have some adjustments in certain delivery schedules. So uh, General Fortin, the officials of the Public Health Agency of Canada, uh, distribute the best up-to-date information that we have with our partners in provinces and territories. But we share the very real impatience of Canadians to get vaccinated. That's why We've been able to accelerate over 22 million doses of vaccines that were initially expected to arrive in subsequent months. We've been able to accelerate their arrival to, uh, to an earlier point, and we'll continue to work in that regard relentlessly to do everything we can to get as many doses in Canada as quickly as we can. So that's something that we've committed to, to, to do uh, for Canadians, and that's something that we work on with provinces and territories, but we're very confident that provinces and territories have uh, the appropriate uh, systems in place in order to be able to effectively and quickly deliver these doses to Canadians as soon as they arrive in Canada. Not having other questions on the phone, we'll now go back to the floor. First question. Dr. Tam. Uh, I would like to get your thoughts about holding the Montreal Grand Prix um, in closed uh, circuit uh, and especially about the quarantines. Would you be open to kind of a bubble uh, and the, so the pilot wouldn't have to respect the quarantine because they, they can't, they can't respect the uh, 14 days quarantine because of the previous event. Uh, where are you at in that uh, reflection? And Dr. Arnoux, if you want to add something in French, and Dr. Arnoux, if you have anything to add in French, that would be great. Uh, C'est Dr. Nguyen, peut-être moi je peux commencer. Je suis un peu... Perhaps I can start. Uh, que Dr. Tam avec, uh, I'm slightly more avec, uh, involved with Dr. Tam on the sports side. Nous autres, on travaille It's interesting. Aussi avec, uh, We avec have been nos working closely aussi, with our uh, colleagues le gouvernement fédéral, through parce the federal que government, même le dossier pour, because uh, pour les ex les exemptions the sound is cutting out for the interpreter here. Aussi avec les uh, These events are aussi also with Donc, other uh, departments. Uh, on, on other departments, on departments are involved, eux, including moi, uh, avec nos collègues uh, à l'Agence de la santé publique. Now, with our colleagues uh, at, at the public health agency, Uh, analyser les, really les protocoles, c'est quoi le protocole pour, uh, pour dépistage, pour peut-être une, une, une quarantaine. Be, Mais uh, comme le Premier ministre a constaté déjà, uh, pour nous autres aussi, noted, uh, en fin de compte, c'est vraiment... Bon, il faut assurer la, la sécurité et la santé des Canadiens, ça c'est la priorité. Uh, Donc, uh, on, on est toujours en mesure de regarder, analyser uh, les, les, les soumissions, les, les, uh, les, uh, les propositions des, 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 des organisateurs des de événements avec, of avec uh, la, la sécurité et la santé des Canadiens uh, comme priorité. Uh, maintenant, uh, je peux vous dire que... Uh, il y a beaucoup de monde aussi, uh, le gouvernement de Québec uh, qui sont en train d'analyser de, de, uh, les protocoles, mais uh, je ne suis, suis pas en, en, dans une position pour, uh, pour vous dire plus que ça. C'est quelque chose, c'est un enjeu actuel. Par ailleurs, euh, est-ce que vous pouvez me dire précisément Question. où vous Can en êtes euh, sur cette idée? J'aimerais savoir un peu une idée d'où vous like positionnez. Est-ce que vous, êtes, est -ce que vous sentez qu'il y a une ouverture d'une part? D'autre part, qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cette bulle qui permettrait aux gens qui participent d'éviter la quarantaine? Je ne sais pas si je comprends bien éviter la quarantaine. Sure c'est sûr que de, tout le monde qui rentre au Canada normalement, c'est uh, normal pour tous les, tous les voyageurs qui arrivent au Canada de, de passer une quarantaine de 14 jours. Des fois, on peut être un peu donné une exemption. Moi, je peux peut-être donner, comme il dit, un avis, un conseil personnel. C est, c est, des fois, c'est un défi parce que And si that sometimes on, is a challenge. On, on analyse un protocole. If you analyze the uh, situation, même avec uh, moi, je me, je me souviens same, des, des champions de hockey mondial pour les juniors. Donc, on a 
analysé les, les protocoles, oui. les, 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 les propositions des de, 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 de organisateurs à un moment donné. Mais on, a, on a dit toujours, et on ne sait pas qu'est-ce qui se passe passer au futur. C'est quoi les situations L'événement va vraiment se passer. C'est la même chose maintenant avec le Formule 1. C'est encore dans quelques mois. Et maintenant, on est vraiment dans une situation très, très préoccupante avec les variants préoccupants, avec les unités de soins intensifs dans plusieurs régions, à travers les pays débordés. Donc, si on analyse la situation maintenant, c'est wow, il faut vraiment avoir des restrictions, il faut vraiment avoir des bonnes mesures de santé publique en vigueur. Donc, ce n'est pas le temps de vraiment, pour moi, de penser à des autres événements, mais on ne sait pas ce qui va se passer. C'est difficile à planifier. Happen aussi un peu in the future, it's a bit difficult deux, trois, to plan something c est, c est, in two or three months from now because we're really looking at a, 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 position, a situation that is happening uh, right McGregor, now. McGregor, CTV News. Question for uh, Dr. Tam. Uh, we've seen other politicians getting their vaccines on camera, uh, providing a lot of information about it. Your office sent out a black and white photo and won't say even what vaccine you had. Uh, could you give us a little more information about your vaccination today and what you had and under uh, how you qualified for that shot? Well, sure. Um, of course, I'm very happy, like most uh, people who uh, have had a um, COVID-19 vaccine that uh, I I actually um, got my shot. Uh, what I did was I went online and filled in a registration according to uh, Ottawa Public Health and the Ottawa Hospitals protocols. I wasn't sure, you know, I, I filled in the questionnaire and uh, and and I await there. Um, respond back to me as to whether this is the time for me. Um, so I did get a response back. And I lined up for my vaccine um, like everyone else. Um, I didn't know exactly which vaccine I was going to get until I received the um, electronic uh, email that um, provided me with information ahead of time um, as to what all, all the information every person who receives a vaccine should get. I knew uh, around that time that I was going to get the Pfizer vaccine and I lined up for it. I was obviously reading about it while I was lining up, and uh, that's what I received. Thank you. We'll get the next question on the floor. Abigail Beeman, Global News. Um, I'm just wondering, in light of uh, changing information around uh, vaccination, whether you think that you're doing enough to combat vaccine hesitancy, uh, especially from Canadians who have legitimate questions about that beyond just telling everybody to get vaccinated. Yeah, I'll uh, offer a few comments. Oh, and then Dr. Tam can add. Uh, we talked to provinces and territories about this very issue uh, Many times in the first minister's call that the prime minister had uh, last week, he again uh, spoke with other first ministers around the importance of working together to combat vaccine hesitancy. Also, the importance of uh, directing Canadians to reliable uh, information from different health authorities around vaccination. There is a significant amount of disinformation circulating. Uh, the best way to combat that is to empower Canadians uh, to have access to reliable scientific information from independent scientific authorities and public health professionals. Uh, that's the best way to reassure Canadians that the vaccines are safe and effective. Um, and we'll continue to work with provinces and territories uh, and the medical community across the country to do whatever we can to enhance public confidence in something that we believe uh, is entirely safe and, and very effective. But Dr. Tam and Dr. New uh, can probably add more. Um, thank you for this question. It's an extremely important aspect of um, rolling out the vaccine programs. Um, as you've seen, there's many different surveys looking at uh, whether people intend to be 
um, to get the vaccine. And I think the latest survey suggests that like 80 percent of Canadians plan to get the vaccine. But many of them still have questions, uh, particularly about safety. And those have to be addressed straight on. And so, uh, as Minister LeBlanc has said, enabling healthcare providers uh, to provide those specific answers is very important. So uh, what we're trying to do is provide the, the tools that they need, uh, training, webinars, um, including any new developments, uh, such as um, we have just seen in the rare cases of clotting with a blood platelets is something that we try to get out to health professionals and different organizations um, as well that may uh, be communicating with um, uh, people in Canada about getting the vaccine. We um, have been supporting some funding um, to enable uh, trusted uh, community level organizations to try and get uh, information across to their communities. Uh, I gave a couple of examples, uh, including church churches, church leaders, Black Canadians taking um, taking uh, their um, uh, place in terms of uh, helping out uh, and getting the information to their communities because they are more trusted by the communities who've experienced health inequities, and so uh, getting to the, the the people who who communities and individual trusts is very much part of that uh, strategy. Uh, indigenous leadership, um, I think we need to highlight just how important that has been in getting um, uh, so many uh, First Nations uh, communities and the territories having such a successful approach in getting uh, vac people vaccinated. I do think that there is more to be done, whether it's through social media and other channels, to reach the younger age groups because um, soon um, they will be uh, in, in that space. Working with workplaces, uh, we've heard workplaces also working with uh, local level and provincial level uh, programs to help uh, get their workers vaccinated, offering their workplaces so that there's increased access. So access is really important. It's not just a matter of people having questions about a vaccine, but can you get the vaccine to them um, as efficiently as possible? So all of those different approaches need to all be done depending on your local situation. We'll take one last question before ending this press for today. Hi. Hi, Dr. Tam. This is Chris Reynolds with Canadian Press. Since we have limited time, uh, a double-barreled question for you. Uh, first of all, I'm wondering, with the record number of patients in ICUs, but a uh, death toll that's well below the record numbers. Is that because of the vaccines? And secondly, with the clotting events largely happening to women, why is an advice around AstraZeneca gender specific? Thanks. Yes, on the, on the uh, first question, um, now I've almost forgotten it. So on the, let's start with the last question. Um, so I think, um, Health Canada has requested um, through their terms and conditions for authorizations um, specific information from AstraZeneca for the Canadian context, which means they would have also asked for the age and sex breakdown of cases so that we can analyze them. But these are rare events. So it's very difficult when the case numbers are quite unstable um, the rates, uh, when you have a very rare event over a large denominator, to try and get a handle of that. Uh, but in the end, what is actually really important is to look at the rates of severe outcomes in different age groups. This might change depending on your jurisdiction, but also with the rising um, cases and uh, increased numbers of severe outcomes in younger populations, the, the analysis on the impact of COVID-19 also has to be taken into account when you look at that benefit and risk analysis. So the data is moving both in terms of the disaggregate data for the rare adverse event and on the, on the COVID-related impacts. So that analysis will be undertaken by the regulator but also from by the National Advisory Committee on Immunization. And provinces also do that, looking at their own specific context. 
as well as their vaccine supply. And that will be uh, sort of re-articulated in the coming days. So we look forward to that kind of data. Um, at the last round, there wasn't enough information to essentially distinguish whether there's any sex difference in terms of the risk. Uh, but we'll await and see what the next analysis shows. In terms of the, um, I think it was on the rising rates of um, severe outcomes. Um, so, so deaths, uh, it was an incredible um, um, sort of heartening, I think, result to see the rates decreasing in those over 80 uh, as they were the first to become uh, offered the vaccine. And the rates of long-term care facility outbreaks go down quite dramatically together with a number of cases in those populations. At the same time, of course, there's been public health measures, infection control measures being applied, but we do believe the vaccine has had an impact and has been effective in reducing severe outcomes in those who were initially prioritized. So what we'll be watching carefully on is, well, what happens in the next age group, for example, and those other priority groups that receive the vaccine. Um, there's some very good data um, suggesting that health workers that have been initially vaccinated, first of all, with the one dose, has had um, really good vaccine effectiveness. And so all the vaccines that we have protect against severe outcomes really well. Um, but what I would say is that de death or mortality is still a lagging indicator, as I've said in my opening remarks. So when we see ICU um, cases going up, as well as um, hospitalizations. I do not know what is gonna happen in another number of days to do in, in terms of the deaths and who are uh, implicated in that very severe outcome. Uh, still, I think most deaths still occur in the older populations, but we will see. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Tam. C'est ce qui me fait la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. Thank you, Dr. Thank Tam. You. This ends our press conference today.